everybody, it's Oscar Sketches and today I'm drawing the Joker for Aromantic Awareness Week. I can explain. Now, okay, I know what you're going to say. Saskia, the Joker isn't aromantic. What are you on about? Um, I know, let me preface this by saying that I know, uh, and also that I have zero knowledge of the Joker character apart from the 2019 movie. <laughs> I have never seen a Batman film in my life. I think maybe I'll watch like five minutes on, on television once. Uh, and I'm not at all familiar with the Joker character. <laughs> um, but I did watch this film, the 2019 film, and it had a part in having me realise that I was aromantic. Um, so the Joker has unironically become like my aromantic pride symbol. <laughs> okay, I'll, um, I'll explain. Let me tell you a story. <laughs> So it was the summer of 2019 um, and let me just give you some background is that for the longest time I believed that I was hetero romantic um, because everybody else, everybody in my like environment expected me to be, right? So even though I kind of always, like, even though I kind of always knew inside that I was a romantic, I never really um, allowed that part of me to exist. I always pushed it back uh, to, I don't know, to the side, out of, out of sight, out of mind uh, type of thing. Like I, I, uh, I always knew that I was un uncomfortable with romantic scenarios, um, but I, uh, I never re really allowed myself to, um, to feel that. Uh, and I always, you know, I never really actually got into any romantic scenarios um, because no nobody that I ever, you know, quote unquote, had a crush on. I convinced myself that I had a crush on them, even though I didn't. <laughs> you know, where you know, it's it's a weird aromantic thing where it's like you know you're meant to be experiencing these feelings and. It, when you're not experiencing these feelings, you start to fabricate them or lie to yourself that you do experience them, and it, it's not great. It's not great for your mental health. Uh, <laughs> and so, at this point, I was completely convinced that I was hetero romantic because I'd lied to myself so much to the point that I actually believed it myself as well, which is just crazy um, to think about. Um, but that, that, that was the mindset, right? You know, I was in complete denial about my, about me being aromantic, complete denial. Um, and so, uh, 2019, summer 2019, I, I met a person that was actually interested in me. And I convinced myself that I was interested in them as well, which the record I wasn't but here's the thing if you'd asked me at that time what is the perfect you know what would the perfect romantic partner be this person ticked every single box on the list that I could come up with you know somebody that like I don't know like likes puppies uh, and and is nice to women you know <laughs> sort of thing uh, is, is respectful to to marginalized communities uh, is, is kind doesn't mind me being asexual um all that sort of thing right this person checked every single box um which was uh you know I, i'd always taught myself oh someday you know i'm gonna gonna find somebody and they're gonna tick all the boxes and i'm gonna be very romantically attracted to them <laughs> but I wasn't I didn't feel anything nothing nothing romantic anyway um which you know that's not what you want when you know you're pursuing a romantic relationship with somebody so um so we I've been, we've been talking for a little bit online um at this point uh and I like we both 
like, okay, so this person, I, I knew that this person was into me, and I, um, because they told me, right, um, uh, and I thought, okay, you know, I don't feel anything right now, but if I just keep trying, I'm gonna feel something. Um, so eventually that led to us going on a date. Um, and I told the story to a friend and he made fun of me for like 30 minutes of the date that I decided to, to <laughs> of, of the, the subject of the topic of the date that I decided on because I because um, we were going to see a film you know where this is going <laughs> and I was meant to pick the film so I picked the Joker 2019 and I don't know, apparently romantic people have told me that this is not the film, not the type of film that you watch when you go on a date. So, I don't know, I suppose this should have been the first sign <laughs> to me. Um, after, you know, all of those signs that like me never ever experience a romantic attraction and me being like, oh, it'll come, it'll come, I'm sure. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah, so if, if anybody ever takes you on a date, and they want to go see the Joker, maybe, you know, ask them if they're aromantic or not and if they've ever heard of the word aromantic. <laughs> anyway, we went on this date. It was horrible. <laughs> to no fault of this person that I went on a date with, because, I mean, um, they were lovely, right? Like, they, they were a, a kind person and they ticked all my boxes, but I was so uncomfortable and it wasn't their fault it was because because of the romantic situation, right? So I'd never been in a romantic situation before, so I'd never realized how uncomfortable romantic situations make me when I am a part of said romantic situation, right? Um, I So we went on this day, you know, and and from the beginning I was like, oh, I don't, I don't feel comfortable. I don't feel comfortable, um, which, you know, that's not the kind of feeling that you want when you go out go out on a date with somebody, right? Um, and again, it wasn't their fault. Like they were doing everything right, but the thing is, <laughs> I'm aromantic, so it didn't. I it didn't matter how um, you know how kind they were or like how it didn't matter what they did because I was going to be I was going to be uncomfortable with the shit with the situation no matter what because I'm a romantic and this was the first time that I ever really felt this oh my gosh I am so uncomfortable in this situation throughout the whole day there were three thoughts running through my mind I am uncomfortable I don't want this I want to go home and that is you know not what you want <laughs> Um, but I just realized how much the pressure of, um, you know, being in a romantic situation, what the kind of pressure that went with it, like, I just, I just felt like I just did not fit into this situation. No, and it wasn't, you know, because of this person. If there was, if I was with anybody else, I would have felt the exact same way because it wasn't their fault. It was the the situation, the the romanticness <laughs> that I was uncomfortable with, um, and I, that was just very. It, it was an eye-opening experience, and I, I laugh about it now. Because, but it was quite <laughs> it was quite devastating back then because obviously I'd had this whole like palace of lies built in my mind, like oh, what my life is going to be like someday. I'm going to meet somebody. And, you know, I'm gonna get married and adopt a dog together. Um, but you know, <laughs> when the most exciting thing about that is adopting a dog, you know, you might as well cut out the middleman altogether. Like, just get the dog. <laughs> and, and no partner, no romantic partner. Um, and when I thought about that, I was like, oh yeah, actually, you know, I'd rather just have the dog instead. <laughs> and I. I, I don't know, it felt, at the time it really felt crushing and, and scary because, oh my gosh, something that I'd always known that I was and that I identified with, but never really grasped, right? 
because I at the time I knew that aromantic people existed, right? I uh, I I don't think if I knew. Yeah, I did. I I knew one uh, demi romantic person, so I at least knew of romantic people. Aromantic people, like I heard this many times. Um, and I was always like, oh yeah, that's cool. There's people that don't experience romantic attraction. Couldn't be me though. <laughs> oh my gosh. It absolutely, it, yes, you know, spoiler alert, it was me. It was me too. <laughs> and that is, so I, I knew of the terminology. So it was different from when I first realized that I was asexual because um, I'd always known that I was asexual as well. Um, but I never knew the terminology for it. So when I first ran across the word asexual, that was an immense relief and I immediately knew, oh, that applied to me, right? Um, and that was that was awesome because I could immediately be like, oh my gosh, uh, by pressure, <laughs> you know, because I'm never gonna have to have sex if I don't want to. And that is okay, you know? And there's other people that feel like that and I'm not alone in this and, and all that good stuff. Um, so it was different um, with the, the, the aromantic thing because I'd always, you know, I knew from the very start that I never ever wanted to participate in like uh, sexual acts. <laughs> um, so when I came across uh, the word asexual, that was, uh, those things like clicked immediately. Um, but when I, um, you know, first realized that, you know, when I first came across the word aromantic, that wasn't the case, uh, there wasn't, you know, it didn't happen the same way because, because I'd convinced myself so much that I really did want a romantic relationship, even though, you know, it was, it would be the absolute worst thing. And I thank God, you know, that I never ran across somebody that liked me in a romantic way before, because if I did, then I could have, I could, I really could have gotten hurt, like very badly, because I was so insecure and I was so desperate to tell other people, like, hey, hey, I'm romantic, see, look, <laughs> I'm so hetero romantic. Right, it was overcompensating because I wasn't feeling anything. And um, so, you know, it was really like emphasizing, oh gosh, I am so romantically attracted to dudes. Have you ever, like, <laughs> seen how romantically attracted to dudes I am. I never was. Um, but I was so desperately trying to convince myself that I was, that I was, you know, uh, displaying that outwardly as well. Um, because I was so insecure about it. And, um, you know, looking back on it now, I can, I can see why I acted that way. But at the time, you know, it wasn't conscious or anything. Like I didn't, do that on purpose. I didn't know all along that I was aromantic in the sense that I, you know, uh, that I was actively trying to deceive people into thinking that I was heteroromantic. No, it didn't go that way. It was, I knew that everybody else, uh, at least in my, you know, my uh, social circle and stuff, everybody else experienced romantic attraction. Everybody else experienced sexual attraction. Um, I didn't and instead of accepting you know okay I, I suppose that's what I feel then you know uh, that's okay instead of that I concluded oh there must be something wrong with me um, and I need to try very desperately to fix this so that I can be you know what I need to be someday and that's toxic as heck uh, but I also was a 12, 13, 14 year old I don't know exactly how old I was but um, you know in a very 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 heteronormative um, environment um, and in you know when I first realized that I was a romantic I didn't even fully accept myself um, so uh, I went home after that date and in a train ride home, I felt so torn because I knew like finally this part of me comes clawing back up from the 
depths of where I buried it within my soul and it's begging for acceptance and it's stepping into the light and it's refusing to hide any longer and I I was trying to accept myself because I knew that's what I was supposed to do but I never really felt it um, you know that it was okay to be a romantic um, at least not for a for a while right I think a couple months ago I finally like really came to the realization of how much hurt this has caused like how much heteronormativity has hurt me because not only did it from like from a very young age indoctrinate me into thinking that I was meant to be a certain way and if I didn't conform to that expectation that there was something wrong with me and not only did it do that but it got me you know to, to realize that it, you know I, I realized I remember thinking oh hey I don't want to kiss dudes and I remember very clearly having that thought and being like, okay, then, you know, I, I have to somehow get comfortable with this. And so what proceeded was just a bunch of mental torture of me really desperately trying to be okay with this by imagining, uh, you know, and by reading like uh, fan fiction and stuff. Um, and really picturing myself in the situation, in romantic situations, and desensitizing myself to it, um, to the point where it didn't feel uncomfortable anymore, it just felt numb, and I only, like, uncovered all of this a couple months ago, <laughs> um, you know, because because obviously, like all of that happened, right? But it was never like a conscious decision or anything. Uh, I genuinely believed that I was hetero romantic for the longest time until I found, you know, until I went on that date and I realised <laughs> when I was watching the Joker. Uh, oh my gosh, I I just <sighs> I don't want this. And on the train ride home, I really came to you know to terms with like okay suppose I'm asexual and aromantic you know um which is <laughs> it's it's um it was difficult then um and then you know because that was 2019 so so uh for like two years or something I just I just walked around with this um okay I guess I'm aromantic then but I'd never really accepted it I was still trying to conform to everybody else's expectations and it was really hurting me um and that that was terrible um but right now you know because like six months ago or something, I, I started I, I started realizing, oh hey, there's a lot of hurt and a lot of pain here, and I that's why I find it so hard to accept myself. Um, so I've been steadily working through that pain, um, and steadily I've been getting better and better at accepting myself. And right now I'm actually in a much better place, and I am feeling confident and happy and proud of my aromantic identity um you know obviously there's still times uh, where i'm like oh not so sure about it i'm not so kind to myself but for the most part um everything is going well and uh <laughs> i've got the joker to thank for that <laughs> so um yeah these were just my thoughts i suppose um Thank you guys so so much for watching this video all the way to the end if you enjoyed it please leave a like and subscribe to this youtube channel for more videos every single friday have a great weekend guys and keep on sketching bye oh and happy aromatic awareness week Woo!